welcome back in this step let's try to understand about a very very important concept in java programming called interface a number of starting programmers find it difficult to understand the difference between an abstract class and an interface syntactically with java 8 both of them are almost the same but from the usage perspective how they are used and the thought process perspective how do you think about it interfaces are very very different so what we are doing in this step is try and give you a little bit of thought process in how you can think about interfaces right now let's look at the picture that you are seeing on the screen right now so that's a console right that's a gaming console so in there whatever buttons that are present in here is the interface that is present to the game right so whatever game you are playing would actually implement something for each of these buttons so when you press this button what should happen that is what the games would implement let's say you are playing a mario game or a chess game these games provide implementations to the different things which are present on this interface and that's exactly how you would need to start thinking about interfaces in java or for that matter in any object oriented programming language let's create a very simple class control n instead of class i'm going to choose something called interface and click next right i'll call this gaming console Let's take a very, very simple gaming console. Let's just say there are four buttons in it, right? So I'll not make it a very complex gaming console. So I'll say public void up. Down. Left. Right. So what we have in here is a very, very simple gaming console interface definition. Who provides the implementation for this? The implementation for this would be provided by the games which are implementing the gaming console, right? So over here, the syntax is very simple, right? Public interface, instead of class, we are using the keyword interface. And inside here, we are just defining the syntax of the methods. We are not really worried about what they do. All that we are worried about is how can you call them. That's basically, so we are providing the declaration and not the definition. Let's move it to a different package. Actually, I created it in an inheritance package. Let's create it in the interface S. I cannot have the package name as interface because it's a keyword. So I'll make it interfaces and move the gaming console to that particular package. So we now have up, down, left, and right. So now I can provide implementation to this gaming console, right? How can I provide an implementation for this gaming console? The way I can do that is going here and create a new class. And let's say Mario game, right? Mario. Click finish. I don't really need a main method in here. Over here, what we would want to do is we would want to implement the gaming console. Implements gaming console, right? Now it says error. So control one, command one, add unimplemented methods. And you have all the methods from the interface coming in here. And you can define what you want to do on each of these buttons, right? So what I can do here is I can say Mario game, when you press up, what does it do? It does a jump, let's say. or this one goes into a hole. So left, let's say does not do anything, right would go forward. So what we are doing is providing implementations for an interface. So this gaming console, what we are doing is we have methods in here, up, down, left, and right. And we are providing the implementation for those buttons in here. So now I can have a game runner, right? So the game runner, let's say, is the one which uses this interface. So let's call this game runner. 
and I'll do this in here. Finish. So the game runner, I can create an instance of the game, right? So let's say Mario game. Game is equal to new Mario game. And I can call methods on it. Up, down, left, right, right, up, down, left, right. So this is cool, right? So jump goes into hole, go forward, and for one of these, there is no implementation. Now, the advantage of the interface is that you can actually have multiple implementations of it. So what I'll do is I'll copy the Mario game, Control C, Control V, and I'll call this chess game, right? Let's just say this is a very simple implementation. So up, I'll say move piece up, down, move piece down, and left is move piece left. And the other one is move piece right. Let's say this is the implementation for a chess game. So now in the game runner, I can actually just replace this statement with a simple statement. Chess game, game is equal to new chess game. So when we replace the cartridge, something of this kind happens. And what happens is now we are playing a chess game. And the magic of this is you can use the gaming console as the so if i say gaming console game is equal to new mario game you can see that i can run the same code this is jump goes into a hole and go forward and if i replace the mario game by a chess game so with the same code we are getting different implementation this is also called polymorphism but this is what is possible with interfaces, right? So I can provide multiple implementations for the same thing. Interface basically represents the common actions that can be performed. So in the gaming console, the common actions that can be performed are up, down, left, and right. And we are providing multiple implementations and interface provides us a way to interchange between the implementations. I can use either the chess game implementation or I can go with the Mario game implementation without making a lot of changes in my code. So I'm easily switching from a Mario game to a chess game. Now, have these concepts in mind and in the next step, we will discuss much more about interfaces. In this step, what we talked about is the fact that interfaces provide the actions, the common actions between classes. We can have multiple implementations of the interface. We use the implements keyword and provide the implementations for that. We saw how to execute code using interfaces. I'll see you in the next step. This video is part of a Java course with more than 250 steps helping you become an expert on Java. You can find the complete course details in the description of the video. Along with it, you can also find the details of a free PDF with 200 pages of awesome code examples in 28 minutes, creating great programmers.